Okay, we left off at the fact that the millennium, that they're counting the years to the millennium in order to calculate how the years of uh, Abraham's early supermaturation would play in the event of church. And Paul had first bracketed balancing this way because that's standard procedure. And then he's going in three year increments. And at this point, you got 54 years to the millennium. And here's the convergence with the temple foundation year 1000. So it would be a, a, he's saying, you know, this would balance if the rapture started then. Okay because that would be evocative everybody would recognize you know the importance of it you got 54 years to the millennium it would be it would be you know helpful okay and that's the 1050th year of David's Hebron kingship all right so that would end up being when the Lord was 43 okay and that would stress the fact that there was a three-year delay you know, in the construction of the temple, so that it would help Jews to know what time it was. Okay? So what if it happened when the Lord was 43? Because there's 54 years left on the clock, and then of those 54 years, seven could be allotted to the tribulation. Okay? Because it's church now. So the, the 57 doesn't have to be a 57 anymore. That's what he's trying to get at when he's showing the the timeline. And in other words, he's doing what if the rapture, but he's also showing the doctrine involved. The doctrine about how God accounts time, God balances time, how is God going to reconcile time? You know, because for 2,000, 4,000 years actually, all of mankind who knew anything about God, they were supposed to know what time it was. So this is a habit that, that he's, you know, following, that everybody used to use, except now all bets are off. And, you know, it doesn't matter what time it is, except that God could play it according to the old ideas. What if he did that? What would that mean? What would be the doctrine you'd learn? That was always the purpose of knowing what time it was, is that he gave you a set time so you could learn the doctrine. Well, after 4,000 years, mankind didn't, still didn't want God, even when he, though he told you what time it was in advance. So, okay, I'm not going to tell you what time it is anymore. Okay, but people got in the habit of associating doctrine to what time it is. So Paul's following the convention. That's the point. He's following the convention to help people orient to the fact that the rapture can occur at any time. So he's not trying to date set the rapture. He's trying to show you how if the rapture happened in a given year, how that would wrap up time for Israel, for church, what would be the effect that year in Rome, etc. That's what he's doing. It's an it's an audit, essentially. Okay, so if the Lord if so if the rapture happened when the Lord was forty three, that'd be forty one forty six from Adam, that would tie back here and tie up that timeline because that's 40 years after the initial timeline when he should have been born. See, it's it's tying back to that. Okay. And, of course, because it's tying back to that, it's tying back to when Israel rejected God as king in 3056. So, that was the 1050. This is 40 years later. See, the 1050, yet another failure signified by his birth because he comes at the end of time so now you got a 40 year allotment after that and he would have been age 43 he would have only been dead for 10 years but it could have happened because there's 40 54 years left to the millennium so the the reimbursement will still occur that's what he's doing here okay next stop is seven years later okay because that's 1057 from Hebron and 1050 from the United Ki Kingship. And it's real evocative because 50 years were allotted to the Gentiles. And now the Lord is age 50. You see, all these numbers are used as mnemonics to remind you of the doctrines involved. 
So, what if the rapture occurred when he was 50? All right, he actually uses 47 in the text instead of 50 because, you know, the, the three-year variance, okay, between the temple year and his birth, he's playing on that in the text. But this is included because he's wrapping all the 1050s. Okay, well, what about three years after that? And the Lord is 53. That would be 1053 from United Kingship, 1060 from Hebron, but that is Temple Dedication Year 1000, because see, back up here, 1050 from Jacob's birth. So that would be a real evocative year to have a, a rapture to, 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 so that Israel during the tribulation can, can identify. Why not do it then? When the Lord is 53. Okay. Now you'll notice this was 57 years from the millennium when he should have been 40. Now we're going 13 years past that. Really 14. He's playing on the 14. The pregnant 14. Okay. When the temple, the rapture could occur when the temple would have been a thousand. A thousand years old from dedication. Okay, and then he picks the year he writes. Now this is what's so important about that. Right here, this is what Mary did. She stopped her Magnificat at 40 years before the millennium starts. That wasn't the way it was supposed to go. It was supposed to go with him dying in the thousandth anniversary of David's death. That's how it was supposed to go. Mary didn't stop her Magnificat there. She goes 17 years beyond that. <clears throat> in, in other words, she's reversing it. She's flipping it. He was supposed to be 40 when he died. There were supposed to be 57 years on the clock. But instead of doing that, she goes to his 57th year when there are 40 years on the clock. That means she already has an inkling that he's not going to die per this schedule. This was the schedule that was in effect that, you know, Isaiah is using for his time poem in Isaiah 53. So that tells me a lot. That, that explains why Paul's playing on what she says. That also explains um, why they immediately credited it as canon. Because you know, oral canon at first, and then Paul, John, uh, Luke reduces it to writing. Zechariah, when um, John is born, plays on Mary's meter. He mimics her meter. I show that in the Magnificat playlist, how he does it. Okay, well, you can see why. Because this is the reverse of the, of the timeline that was scheduled, meaning there will be a reversal. Okay? So there's a 17 year difference. And 17 of course is 14 plus three. That's, that's clever number stepping. In other words, <clears throat> the, just as, as you know, Solomon was late in building the temple, Israel's gonna be late in accepting him. So we're gonna see a little reversal here because he's the 56 of history, meaning Israel will not be voting, but he will. So Israel will get her 40 years warning Now, did Mary know that there was going to be church? I don't think so, because it was up to him to announce it. She must have known something. Something was going to happen. What was that something going to be? Who knows? Okay. <clears throat> so you have that. That's the trigger point here, is that there's 40 years before the millennium starts that he's piggybacking where she left off typical style that's been going on since Moses. Okay. And then we get to our to our second 1077, this time from Hebron. See, this was 1077 from David's birth. That's the meter that Isaiah 53 uses. So now Paul is bracketing. He's bracketing this time with the 1077. And in this particular case, 4173 from Adam 
okay, is 1077 years prior to it, okay, David was crowned at Hebron. And 1077 years after it, this typical mirroring style that these people use, 1077 years after 4173 is the end of the millennium. See? So he brackets here, and he brackets here, and by bracketing here, he's bracketing here. Okay? It's really clever. Okay? He's showing, he's, he's basically saying high equidistance, playing on the 1077s. Now, I'm sure there's more to it than that, but this is all I know about it right now. I've been trying to figure this out for months, and I've gotten closer to it lately, and I've at least finally balanced his numbers, but I still don't know all of why he's doing what he's doing the way he's doing it. I, you know, I'm telling you everything I know about it right now in case I die tomorrow. Not that there's any plans that I know of. <clears throat> I seem to be healthy. But you never know. Could get hit by a truck or something. Okay? So then Paul goes to three years after that. <clears throat> now, of course, this is evocative because the Lord is age 70. In other words, 70 means completed vote. Okay, so maybe the completed vote occurs. And, in fact, as we know from history, it does. The temple dies in 70 A.D. See, the Lord's age 70 is equivalent of our A.D., and he's tracking exactly to R.A.D., which hopefully you see now why it works that way. It took me a long time to figure that out. And I didn't really understand it till last week. That's why I made all these videos so quickly. Okay, well, let's pretend that, that that's just the beginning of the tribulation instead. What if it's three years later that the temple goes down? See, the temple actually goes down here, right at the midpoint. Maybe Paul knew. You know, because Paul's going to be dead at this point. He dies two years prior to the temple going down. And, well, okay, what if the rapture begins at 70 instead, and the temple goes down when the Lord is 73? Because remember, it's supposed to go down at trib midpoint. Well, 73 is 2,000 years after Joseph's enslavement. So we got a little balance going on here to Jacob. Okay, this is after Joseph. Joseph's enslavement is 10 of the 400 years in the Exodus slavery prediction in Genesis 15. So, and this is really clever, that's Exodus year 1510. All right, basically, that's equal to the age with the temple also. It's really clever how that got done. 1440 BC by our reckoning to 70 AD by our reckoning is 1510 years. But see, we got that extra three piece because, you know, he's born three years earlier. So, that's, that's your 1510. Count it either way. Count it, you know, with him born 4 BC or moving up everything, you know, three years. Wow, what a convergence. 2,000 years after Joseph was enslaved. All right, then we got our next bracket of 1077, this time from David's united kingship. Well, that might be four years later. Okay, the Lord at this point would be 77. That would be a poetic time for the rapture to either begin or end or in the middle because he's metering to it. That's the end of one of his clauses, okay? As hopefully you've seen by now if you've watched the GGS videos, because I've already walked everybody through that in detail, all this what if the rapture thing. Now the latest date that the rapture should begin under the old schedule would have been when the Lord was in his 91st year. Remember, again, he's born at the end of a year. So the 91st year begins on your 90th birthday. So his 90th birthday, though, is at the end of the year. That's year 1050 from David's death. From his death. That would be poetic. 
and that was in fact the latest time period because the millennium was supposed to start in 4200 from Adam John when he writes Revelation 1 verses 1 through 3 meters to this part of it his meter dates his book as being written in the 91st year of Christ in other words again you have to remember the 91st year of somebody is their age minus one okay he when he turned 90 he was beginning at that very moment his 91st year and that's exactly how John dates he uses three different um, dating schemes to do it he dates Revelation as being 58 years after Christ died on the cross as being 84 years after Judea became a, pro a province and 126 years after Mary's birth or um, yeah after Mary's birth he's playing back to the Magnificat also that's how his meter works it's 58 84 and 126 and the 126 is pregnant for the time that the ch that the temple when the temple died when the temple died here he had 126 years to go and he's basically drawing parallel to the fact that Christianity is deserves to be in diaspora too because that's how bad Christianity is at that point which he had already said in first through third John so it wasn't any big surprise and of course all you have to do is read the text in Revelation 1 1 through 3 and, and um, 2nd John 3rd John and 1st John 2 1 1st John chapter 2 to know how bad it was already by the 90s AD but specifically 91 is when he writes Revelation so I'm not really sure when he wrote 1st John it was somewhat earlier okay well you know that was the outer limit of when the tribulation should have begun okay but you know maybe it's a little later like three years later you notice how he keeps tracking the three four and seven because he's tracking the mid-trib because the temple could be going down at these three-year benchmarks so he's, he's notching it very you know by sevens and threes okay well what if it happened three years prior to the old schedule end of you know beginning of the millennium well then that would reimburse from Abraham because remember see he's tracking here the Lord had to be born three years earlier because of David's united kingship alright well then that would that meant that he was three years shy versus Abraham so he has to be 93 before he balances to Abraham and repays the 54 years So that would be temple year 1040 but temple foundation year 1050 so it's 2154 from Abraham and temple foundation year 1050 see how they converge and that clever okay well maybe that's not the right year maybe it starts when the Lord would have been 97 and this was supposed to be when the Millennium was supposed to begin well maybe the trip begins instead there what would that mean okay well that's 40 years after Paul writes so it's got a resonance there it would have a special resonance because the millennium was supposed to begin then but the trip begins instead that's temple year 1044 and that's temple destruction you know reconstruction year 600 okay it's more because it's his age 97 and this was supposed to be the beginning of the millennium which is why of course John is writing at the beginning of that period <coughs> basically to let everybody know that hi the rapture is not likely which is of course Paul's theme here because Christianity is going to go into the tank that's exactly what Moses was saying in the song of Moses he but just before Israel went into the land Moses wrote the Song of Moses and he said Jeshurun would, would get sleek and fat and kick meaning rebel and that of course was the period of the judges and this is the counterpart to that to that this is this is church's song this is the song of Paul about church 
Okay, am I still recording? Okay, yeah, I'm still recording. Okay, good. Oh, but it's acting funny. Okay, so I'm going to sign off here. This part here is pure speculation. You know, this would be Temple Year 1077. Is Paul tracking to it? But these dates here don't have any resonance except this. This is the only resonance. And I'm not, it doesn't seem to be significant enough. The millennium was supposed to end 5250. And then Paul, if, he, if he's adding seven past the end of the millennium, that would be Temple Year 2100. So maybe he's doing that. But, you know, this is just sort of speculation. I, I don't have any, I don't have much to back it up. It's more of a gee whiz. So that kind of ties it up. Hopefully you've gotten a lot out of this. And you can see that Paul is using the 1077s to create the most like, you know, most likely rapture dates when you look at his meter in the Greek and you understand why he's tracking to all of history and showing how church would wrap up history from Adam all the way down if the rapture occurred in each one of these benchmarks. Signing off.